entertain us! We're going as fast as we can. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little embarrassed to show you. Can't have too many nuts and chocolate and biscuits. It seems that we have a leak, but I noticed that there was uh, water coming in from behind the stuffing box. We've been an arduous passage so far. As you can see, we're all working really hard. <laughs> I thought you're setting me up for some kind of joke. You look guilty. What have you done? Then I sneaked in half a block of chocolate. Yeah, and I found the other half of the Did you? <laughs> Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. Last episode on Sailing Millennial Falcon. Well, we think that we might have found a window sailing to Madeira. All right, you're out. That's beautiful. We're officially kind of underway. We're still in the port, but we are <laughs> officially off the docks. It's good though. First, uh, the first few hours are good. You can still see the island behind us. You can still make that out. Bye bye, Sao Miguel. Bye bye, Azores, actually. Never gets old. Never. Wave the Maybe the fact that we're being silent this time, they're yeah, actually they sticking around. around. <laughs> we're some more. We love Bye -bye. you. Entertain us. We're going as fast as we can. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, that was cool. I want to be beam reaching again because it's fun. <laughs> you were saying? I hate running down a bit. It's horrible. At least on this tack, the, uh, the swell is sort of behind us and it's not constantly interrupting the sails. But definitely my least favourite point of sail. So it's pretty much um, 24 hours actually after we first started, after we first set out and the sea has turned into soup. The wind has dropped, which we knew it was going to drop, but it's dropped to about eight or nine knots. Um, we're still moving, we're still doing about five to six knots of boat speed, but because the waves were, are still hanging around from yesterday, when there was a lot of wind, it means that we're just kind of being like rolled around. It's just not very comfortable. Um, we've had to jibe because we were getting a little too much Southing done and not really any easting. It was at a stage when we were just pointing full on south, and, uh, and at that stage we were both like, okay, I think we need to jibe. So we're on a good, a kind of good like east wind leg now. First day into passage. It's it takes a bit of getting used to, doesn't it? I think I slept actually relatively well last night, and Adam, on the other hand, did not at all. I asked him once. He'd been downstairs for four and a half hours. I was like, oh, how do you sleep? He's like, oh, I think I got about 20 minutes. So for, a, so for almost four hours, for over four hours, he was just lying there, just doing nothing. Um, I, on the other hand, immediately went downstairs and snoozed. I have definitely caught up from all of my sleep. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good so far. Uh, settling back into passage life. Snoozy, I was just saying how you didn't have much sleep. Checking the weather. Yeah, no. And just the rolling and the, the cr creaking of the sails and just, yeah, wasn't, wasn't a great start. I don't think I'll have too much trouble tonight. Having said that, it looks like we're probably uh, going to be whistling for the wind.
Happy is going pretty happy. We've got her on the him. Adam, is happy a boy or a girl? Right, it's a boy. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, there's everything on the boat's female, and that's just silly. He is on the most sensitive setting, so on the hydrophone there's actually three settings. One of them is for just normal wind, the other one is heavy weather, and the other one is very light winds. So we've got, her, we've got him on the light wind setting, and uh, it's keeping up very, very well. As I've mentioned before, it's, it's like, I couldn't do a better job myself. Um, when it's, especially when it's on the light wind setting, it's ridiculously sensitive. It's really, really good. So it keeps up with these, with the wild waves that are out here. It's keeping up pretty well with them. It's tea time. When we're in St. Martin, we've got these coffee bags for Adam. So I don't really drink coffee when I'm underway. I like it when I'm on anchor, but when I'm underway, I'm like, well, it just makes me feel really sick. So I usually stick with tea or like hot chocolate or something. And, uh, and so when we're in St. Martin, we got these coffee bags. That's the only way I can really describe them. And they're really good for on passage because otherwise we'd usually use our French press, steam press. Um, but these coffee bags are awesome. You just boil out the water, same as what you would do for a tea. And they're actually pretty good. Um, to have instead. Quick and easy, but with biscuits. I will introduce you, I don't know if I've shown you, maybe I'm a little embarrassed to show you, our snack basket. It's, it's pretty good, it's a pretty good snack basket. What have we got? Cookies? Yes. With the dinghy on the deck up here, you can't really see much, so there's a torch on it, but whenever we go on passage, we have a, we fill up the, uh, the passage basket. Passage snack basket. Can't have too many nuts and chocolate and biscuits for a passage. Hmm. Thank you. That's yours. And that's us. That's mine. And I've just gone to check the engine, just making sure our coolant level is okay, etc, etc. There's a lot of water coming in, so we're investigating now. the water heater. Can't see any water. Oh, that's good stuff. I can see like I think it's a hose like this here. Okay. It's near the door. I can see like this. See the mist? Yes. That's like a that's gotta be like oh, a high yeah, yeah. pressure. Yeah that stopped it. So it's we've got a I don't know, it's just worn through the bronze, the copper pipes. Kiara's just turned off the, bit, the house water pump, and that seems to have stopped it. So. Well, first well, disaster of the trip. If that's the thing, there's always a thing. Actually, before we left, we were saying, if we make it through this passage completely unscathed, this will be the 10th passage in a row that we've got completely unscathed. Yeah, and no, I don't no, know if completely. we should count that. Yeah. Not completely unscathed. Yeah, without disaster level yeah. issues. And I don't think that counts. That's like easy fix. Like exactly. The bilge pump. Yeah, that was okay. The worst case there was we would have just run out of water. Yeah, I was noticing that the bilge pump was going off a little often, but I know that we have, so we don't have a dribbler stuffing box. So I kind of attributed to it to that. And then just uh, before the sunset for the evening, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go do some maintenance checks, just make sure that everything in the engine bay is running okay for the whole night. Um, and I was mainly checking on the coolant because we thought that we had a leak in the coolant. No, it's said we have a leak of other proportions. Just, this is totally your find and your solution. This is all so. you. You should tell the folks playing at home your process. Notice, you noticed the bilge went off. Yeah. You so, went in and followed the leak. Yeah, so I followed the leak. But I noticed that there was uh, water coming in from behind the stuffing box where there should only really be water coming in from the stuffing box. That should just be it. First thing that I checked was uh, whether it was salt water or fresh water. And thankfully, it was fresh water. 
I still had to get the grotty water in my mouth. You have to be very careful about that step when you're in the proximity of the toilet plumage. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it if you're dealing with the toilets. Very, very true. Um, and because and initially when we were up here, I was like, look, if it's fresh water, we'll just try turning the um, house water pump off. Because that, in theory, you know, it, it's a pump to constantly make sure that there has water flowing around it. It's like leaving a tap open. As soon exactly. as it pressurizes all the house lines, it stops pumping. And so yep. if you've got a hole in one of the lines, it thinks you've left a tap open and it will keep pouring water out. So yeah, turned so, off the water pump, the leak has stopped. Exactly. And um, we're on the foot pump yeah. until we get there, really. So I think that's a good lesson. Um, if, you, if you have a new boat, make sure you put a foot pump in so you can still yeah. have water. Pump. Well, yeah, if you didn't have like a gusher pump to get water out of tap, like drinking water, or cooking water or whatever, yeah. you would have to like turn it on, use the tap, turn it off, yeah. and be pouring water out the leak every time. Yeah. I feel really invisible in this shot because I'm <laughs> you look like clear as day and I'm just like this pair of floating teeth in the background. <laughs> so I'm done. Okay, it's I'm time out. to wrap it up. It's too dark, it's too dark. Oh, there's a little bit of water in there. Yeah, it's not Breakfast time and a celebratory breakfast because the engine's gone off significantly earlier than we expected. We were expecting maybe another four or five hours of motoring. So this is very good and it just so happened that as soon as Adam came up from his sleep, we could turn the engine off. <laughs> we've, we've laid up a little um, a bed in the, in the bow so whenever we sleep we can go in there and it's a hell of a lot quieter. So, um, oh, when, when we're motoring, so Adam slept quite nicely in there. At the end of day three, we'd finally managed to get into the swing of things and had found our groove. So it's been an arduous passage so far. As you can see, we're all working really hard. <laughs> There's only one member of the crew that's really pulling his weight. Uh, <laughs> He's like waving to us right now. Great time. So we put a fishing rod in today. Yeah, we caught a fish. Is that what I think it is? I think it might be. Oh my god! What? Only a little. <laughs> that's a good feed for the two of us. Bar jack. Yeah. Maybe a little Oh, I'm gonna need pliers or something to get that out. Come on, champ. Look at your greeny guts. We probably could have got a feed out of it, but yeah, yeah it was not, uh, it's not worth it. I think We're over the last the few ones. Exactly, yeah. The last few years we haven't really eaten that much fish, so I'm just out of the I'm out of the fish eating habit, I think. Yeah. So if oh, we catch a fish, I'm know. like, eh. I just have to be confident that we'll get like a fillet, a, a, a meal each, like a a plate each side yes, on yeah, the fish. So exactly. if I look at the fish and it's like barely one of us will get a decent feed, it's not worth it. Yeah, um, exactly. Anyway, that was a bit of fun. Yeah, the breezes, bit of excitement. We got to turn the motor off a lot quicker, which was fantastic, and we've managed to sail at a pretty brisk pace considering all day. Uh, we've made, what, five, five happy fives and sixes all day? Yeah, I think so. Um, the wind is shifting around quite a bit forward of the beam now and the swell is slowly following it so it's getting a little not impossible to sail by any means but a little bit less sort of effortless you might say yeah she's starting to sort of have to work a bit harder to get through the swell uh, but we're still moving what was the highlight of your day uh, highlight of my day what are you smiling about <laughs> what was the highlight of your day I feel like you've been. I asked you first. I feel like you're setting me up for some kind of joke. You look guilty. What have you done? Nothing. <laughs> Highlight of my day. Um, I did sleep very well, considering we had the motor on. I slept very well. He got about four hours of sleep out of four hours. That's pretty yeah. good. Particularly with the motor on. I never sleep with the motor on. My highlight was so we've kind of been thinking we might run out of entertainment on this trip. It's going to be very disastrous, but my highlight was finding out that I haven't read a book that's on my Kindle. How's your day going? It's a lovely day, actually. A lot of purpose today. I've started and might possibly finish a whole book in one day. How many pages? <laughs> I'm 52% of the way there and I started it at about midday. It's doing pretty well. And 
then I sneaked in half a block of chocolate to eat while I read my book. Yeah, and I found the other half and ate it. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> eat the half you put back in the snack last <laughs> Yeah, I ate it about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we to eat together. <laughs> oh well, I, I was looking for something to snack on. I saw it there. I was like, oh yeah, typical. Don't recall us agreeing to open that. I was like, well, I guess this is mine then. <laughs> It's just gone, it's about half nine. Well, Kiara's released me early for my uh, my rest, rest for my time off shift. As you can hear, it's pretty well deserved at this point. I've got mush for brains. Um, yeah, I'm gonna rack out until half past one, where uh, I'll then get up and relieve Kiara until 5 a.m. and then I'll go back down again and knock off until well, until I'm done sleeping and then Kiara will do the same and then we'll spend the afternoon together, rinse and repeat. <laughs> Look at the bloody way, faces and everything. <laughs> oh, me. <sorry. laughs> With no other people to entertain me on this trip, I'm always getting very desperate. I'm laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs>